You have to excuse the fact that I'm sweating a bit. I've just, I don't know if you can see, but this morning's walk has been from way down over there and it's, it's a bit of a bit of a hill with them. Um, but what I thought I'd do is take the opportunity, whilst it's nice and pretty quiet, um, to briefly talk about something. I've talked about aggression before, but it's not aggression as such, um, but briefly talk about an aspect that's quite prevalent in dog training um, and in behavior modification and in advice given for a common problem sort. And when we're talking about dogs that are reactive, that are aggressive, if you like, towards dogs, people, generally that sort of thing. Some people say they're aggressive towards cats or whatever, but we're gonna give that as a given that that's uh, predatory based, you know, that's a prey based behavior rather than aggressive. And what you find is really, really common is that a lot of people try and pigeonhole all aggression into fear. All right, so if I'm, if I'm guarding my food, it's fear of losing it. So it's a fear-based behavior. If I'm guarding the sofa, it's through fear of losing my sleeping place. So it's a fear-based behavior. If I'm biting people as they come towards me, it's the fear of strangers approaching me. Or I might be protective of my owner, you know, but generally it's fear. It's a, it's a feeling that I have no control, so I'm fearful of it. Um, if I'm, I don't know, snapping at children when children are, are, are in the room, then I'm fearful of kids. You know, everything is put down to fear. Um, I, I've even heard it said that um, a dog that's pulling on the lead is afraid. It's pulling on the lead because it wants to get away, because it's afraid. Um, dogs that are giving it stink at another dog across the road are doing so because they're afraid of the dog and they want to get away. And to be honest, I saw a video this morning from somebody, I won't say who, who basically advised that if your dog is um, barking towards another dog, you know, you're walking along and your dog suddenly kicks off towards a dog in close proximity, that you feed it and pick it up and take it away. And that's a, 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 a well, I don't know because I've never met the person, but a professional, I'm assuming, um, dog trainer advising that you feed the dog for looking at you and then pick it up and let it know that by looking at you it can escape the situation. Well, that's just reinforce. If that was fear, you're reinforcing it. Do you know what I mean? Basically saying Any anything I'm afraid of, help me run away from. Yes, okay then, you know, and you pick it up and you shoot off with it. That's doing nothing to address the situation. But then again, the same sort of person goes on and advises that if your dog jumps up at people, close it in the kitchen. Um, which, okay, common sense, but it's not training. That's the dog training you. That's the dog doing something that you don't know how to prevent in terms of a training aspect. You don't know how to teach the dog something else, so you're simply locking it away. Well, simple answer, don't get a dog, and then you won't have any problems whatsoever. But anyway, I digress. Um, the thing about fear, wh why everything is being labeled fear, and how it's so convenient to say that everything's fearful. For a start, it takes away the need for me to issue any form of discipline for the dog because I'm not gonna discipline anything or anyone that's fearful. It feels wrong, it is wrong. You know, you don't create um, a resolution to a fearful situation by using discipline, by using punishment and correction to do so. So if I label everything as fearful, or every response that the dog gives that I don't like, that's potentially aggressive, that's reactive, if I say it's all fearful, then I immediately discount any form of correction or discipline being put into that dog as a means of addressing that behavior. What it does instead is it plays into what I want to believe or what I want people to believe is, is it's an emotive thing. So if you're afraid of it, I feel for you. You know, I feel your need and I feel your fear and I want to help you get over it. So I'm going to do so by bringing out my, situ uh, my training approaches like desensitization and counter conditioning, you know, and picking my dog up and taking it away and stuff like this. But the fact is, anybody who's worked with a number of dogs will know for an absolute certainty, and I know that there are lots and lots of owners um, who I've worked with that will also know with absolute certainty, that some dogs are reactive and aggressive because they simply are that way, because they haven't been raised, whether rightly or wrongly by the owner, whether it's a rescue or whatever, they haven't been raised with sufficient boundaries and discipline to respect where they fit into a human dense society. They're dogs that have been allowed to get away with small things that have then gone into larger things that have then gone into gross behaviors where it then becomes severely problematic. And that's when people start seeking help. But the dog hasn't done so because the dog's afraid. What you end up with, where you end up with a dog that's snarling at you when you enter the kitchen because it wants you to get out because it considers it to be its own space. That isn't a dog that's afraid of losing its space of the kitchen. 
It's a dog that hasn't had correct boundaries, guidance, leadership, discipline put into it at an early enough age to realise that that is never going to manifest itself because you won't allow it. You know, because the dog never even needs to think about doing that because it's never been permitted. But when you have a permissive uh, household, a permissive owner, whether naively or willfully, and you then couple that with trainers who are equally permissive, so I allow the dog to get away with everything and put it under the guidance of, or under the umbrella term of fearful, then I have big problems because I'm not actually doing anything to address the underlying cause. And the underlying cause is that the dog doesn't have any form of boundary, it doesn't have guidance, it doesn't have learning put into it in a way in which it can understand. Now this isn't to sort of like say that positive training or training with reward is wrong or is bad. Of course it isn't. Of course there are times and there are situations where it's brilliant to motivate and generate speed and generate, you know, really um, exuberant responding through the use of adding rewards. But it must be known, it absolutely must be known from vets, from breeders, from people who run puppy socialization parties, uh, to trainers, to everybody. You must know that dogs require guidance. Dogs do require discipline. They absolutely do. And by discipline, please take out, or by the word punishment or correction, please take out of your mind any thoughts of beating seven shades of whatever out of your dog or smacking it across the nose with a, you know, the buckle end of a bloody uh, metal dog lead or anything like that. That isn't what I'm talking about. That isn't what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is establishing rules right from the outset and letting the dogs know that these rules count. They matter. They're not something that you can take the piss out of, if you like. They're something that you, they're not flexible. They are what they are. You know, when I, when I tell you to come to me, you come to me. Um, you, you learn to walk with me nicely on a lead. Um, you learn to give me whatever you have right from the outset. You must do that. You must understand that. In return, I'll give you all of the affection. I'll give you all of the exercise. I'll give you all of the interaction and the fun stuff. But we must get one thing clear. And that thing is that I own you. I am in charge of you. Like it or lump it, whether you say it's your fur baby, whether you say it's one of your fur kids, whether you're a fur parent, whether you don't own your family unit or whatever, you either pick that dog up from a rescue centre and took ownership of it, or you paid money for it. You own the dog. And as such, you have a moral obligation to teach that dog safe passage through life. And covering everything, this isn't at owners, by the way, this part here that I'm talking about isn't at owners. This is for um, certainly for dog trainers and dog trainers of, of a particular type of a particular persuasion, of an ideology, of a, of a single-minded approach. Do you know what I mean? It is wrong. You are damaging animals by claiming that everything that they do that is potentially aggressive, reactive, that represents a threat, is based on fear, just so that you can fit your ideology of using fear uh, modification approaches to try and address it. Equally, the moment that, and I'm not a dominance theorist, I'm not somebody who, who believes that dominance can cross species. My dogs don't see me as a wolf. They do see me as somebody who will give them guidance, who will give them discipline, who will give them affection, who will give them play, you know, who will give them rules, who will give them structure. They see me as that, but by Christ, they don't see me as a wolf. And I should hope nobody else sees me as a wolf either. So I'm not talking about being a cross species dominant alpha uh, sort of person. But, but the moment that you believe that dogs don't um, operate within any form of a hierarchy, that they don't recognise um, uh, submission and that they don't recognise asserting one another over other dogs, that you believe that all dogs are equal, that all dogs are created equal and that they all have a fun, happy time and live in this beautiful, fun place, is very wrong. Dogs require, they require that hierarchy, they require knowing where they are. Do you know what I mean? But if I'm going to if I'm going to denounce that, if I'm going to say that's absolute wrong and it's been mis, uh, you know, uh, what's the um, debunked? Yeah, so that, that's the thing that's banded around all over the place. It's been debunked. Um, David Meat was wrong, and he admitted that he was wrong when he when he um, did his studies on wolves, and it was captive wolves and not wild wolves. And yes, 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 whatever. Um, and so dominance doesn't exist. Hierarchies doesn't don't exist. You know, a dog requiring uh, an understanding of a place in a social structure doesn't exist. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But because you're saying that, because you've bought into this, then you can't now turn around and say, the dog is behaving in such and such a way because you haven't adequately taught it guidance. You haven't adequately taught it to listen to me. Because what I'm saying, as your owner, as your leader, as your guide, as your teacher, you can even call it your fur mom. 
or your fur dad, if you like. It doesn't matter. It's semantics what it is. But I'm the one who's basically laying down the rules as to which you need to follow. But the moment that you say that that doesn't exist, then you're in trouble. Then you're in trouble because you're putting yourself on an equal footing. And you're not on an equal footing, sadly, unless that dog's going to leave you at home while it goes out to work and earns the money to come back and feed you. You'll find that you're not on an equal footing. But this whole thing of treating everything as fear-based, you need to look at it. You need to look at teaching dogs like that control behaviours. They need to have a real understanding of who they listen to and when they listen to it. You don't beat it into them. You can't punish it into them. But equally, you can't bribe, reward them out of it. You know, you can't make them think that there's no need to be like that because I've got hot dog. It isn't going to happen. Neither one of those things are going to happen. And this, this misguided belief that it's one or the other as well. You know, it's a combination. Everything comes in. But with a dog like that, you need to give that dog structure. You need to drain its battery down for a start. And then you need to start giving it structure. And it needs to be consistent. And the consequences need to be consistent. And you need to not be afraid to give a negative consequence to a negative behaviour. And a positive consequence to a positive one. But the positive consequence must come from you. It must show that you are uh, the person that is basically in control of that dog. And control is a huge thing. You have to have control of your dogs. I'm going to go on and on and I'll start digressing and going off on tangents. So I'm going to leave it there. But it's just something that's been on my mind for a while. This whole um, teaching dogs that uh, react to other dogs um, that they're okay uh, by desensitization. I'll tell you the thing that spurned it. Sorry, I said I was going to end. I'm just going to carry on a little second. I'll tell you the thing that I spurned it when I, when I read an article from a dog behaviorist who used a stuffed dog to try and get a dog over. And, and the APDT do it. Certainly in the States. I think they probably do it in the UK as well. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, using a stuffed dog, so a dog that looks like a dog but is in actual fact a teddy bear, to teach another dog how not to be reactive towards it. I mean, how ludicrous is that? It has a, it, a complete and utter um, lack of understanding in terms of how dogs communicate with one another. It doesn't allow for any sort of um, olfactory prowess. It doesn't uh, 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 allow for any sort of like visual cues in the way that dogs move. There's no sound. There's no real sound coming from it. You've got a teddy bear. If you can't get a dog to clo close in on a teddy bear using high value rewards, there's something wrong with you. You know, but do, take the teddy bear away and take the dog outside and now try and get the same dog to do it in another dog that's aggressing towards him and you'll fail. You'll fail because it isn't fear. You're not looking at fear, you're looking at a dog that has got absolutely no idea of what it should be doing when it's on a lead next to its owner in the presence of other dogs or in the presence of anything else that it feels necessary to start using aggressive responses towards. I'll end it there, I'm going to go on otherwise.